what's up in them gorgeous beautiful beautiful gamers and welcome back to Roleplaying James this merry old corner in the internet where we like to discuss about RPGs if you like the content if you like the video if you like these conversations with Mario James I would very much like to invite you to hit that like button to hit <laughs> that like button subscribe to the channel if you haven't already today what is uh, today's subject video today we're going to be speaking about voice both in Souls games and in Elden Ring. Elden Ring, since we don't know how poise works, uh, thanks to the closed network beta test. So, before we get into how poise works in Elden Ring, I should very much like to add a little bit of context, because remember that these videos are focused on helping new players trying to get into the Souls games, and maybe Elden Ring is the first, their first time. So, that being said, a little bit of context about what is Poise, how does it work on the different Souls games, uh, how does it work in Elden Ring, how do we use it, why is it so goddamn important, and why is everyone making a huge buzz about it. First and foremost, you see Poise over here. As you can see, if you read the description, it says ability to receive attacks without breaking form. Essentially, what Poise does is that it allows you to get hit by the enemy and do not get staggered by the enemy. That is the purpose of Poise. Now, since that is the purpose of Poise, why is so different from one game to another? We have two main terms to have in mind when we discuss about Poise. We have passive Poise and hyper armor because poise has changed quite substantially depending on the souls game that you play that said dark souls a little bit of dark souls 2 had passive poise which essentially what it means is that you can get hit by the enemy while standing still it doesn't matter what you do you cannot get staggered depending on how much poise you have Let's showcase that we're also going to be discussing why was it changed and what are they doing on Elden Ring to fix that. So let's. Oh, do remember that I am wearing a high poise armor. Now also, um, the enemies right here, they are some of the most highest damaging enemies that you can find. Ba basic enemies that you can find in the game. These are Black Knights. As you can see, I'm only going to be standing still in here. Nothing's going to happen to me. I do not get staggered because I have heavy armor and my poise is shielding me from that deck. There will come a point where he's going to keep hitting. There you go. See? So, essentially what it happens is that you have an invisible bar right there that is building on each hit the enemy. Uh, takes on you but what if I what if I take my armor at the very first hit I am going to get staggered because I do not have any kind of poise so with every single hit oh gee, oh dear uh, I'm going to die in here no I'm not uh, with, it, with every single hit I am always going to be able to well I am always going to get staggered so what is the bad thing about this well, the bad thing about passive poise is that when it comes to PvP, let's discuss about PvP, uh, there was something called mm, backstab fishing. So essentially, if you build your character properly as a tank, you can just tank through the enemy's attack, get in the back of the enemy, and get a free backstab because you never get stunned, you never get staggered. Uh, when someone's hitting you. So that was a fairly common thing to see. As you can see, he hits me, I go back and backstab. And this is also true for PvP. Again, he hits me. Come on, hit me! I go back and backstab. <laughs> this is why Poise was so broken uh, in Dark Souls 1. So, uh, what did they did? What did From Software did? to change that, to fix that. 
let's move on quickly to the Dark Souls 3 to explain you a little bit what they did and later on we can discuss about what they did on Elden Ring. I'll see you in a bit. Alright guys, we're back in Dark Souls 3. Now, one huge thing important to have in mind. Do remember that in Dark Souls 1 I was on the highest level uh, enemies that I could possibly find. In here I am on the lowest level enemies that I can possibly find to showcase to you, to demonstrate to you, I am also wearing heavy armor. Mornis armor is heavy armor. How this poise works in Dark Souls 3, essentially what From Software wanted to do was to prevent players to keep fishing backstabs from the enemies and from PvP, hence ruining PvP. So what they did is that they moved poise over, this also changed throughout patches from the original launch date, but essentially what they made is that they added hyper armor on actions. You still have your poise in here. Here it is, we still have poise. But, the problem is that poise in Dark Souls 3, it's not passive. It's not inherently there, always, at all times. Poise in Dark Souls 3 functions differently because it triggers that invincible bar that I am speaking about, that I told you about, triggers only when you're performing certain actions. So, let me demonstrate real fast in here. We have this enemy, this enemy has a crossbow, so it's not us useful. As you can see, it doesn't matter what kind of enemy he is, I'm always, always, always going to get staggered by the enemy hits. It doesn't matter if it's the weakest weakling you can ever find in the game. It doesn't really matter. They are always going to stagger you. Now, if I make this... As you can see there, I tanked through the enemy attack because of the poise that I have when I am performing that action. That poise is being summed up by the poise that you have there, by the poise that the weapon that you have, and by the action that you have. The heavier the weapon, the heavier the poise increment that you are going to keep to be getting in your actions. So for example, might actually be a little bit mistaken, but if I do a light attack, yeah, I get staggered because that it's that hyper armor from, from that action is not nearly enough for me to be able to withstand the, the enemy. As you see there, uh, well, he was able to hit me in the end, but the hyper armor that I get from the poise was helping me to tank through the, the action. So if you had a heavier arm uh, weapon, let me see what kind of weapons do I have right here. Uh, I do not have... oh, well, we have the Dragon Slayer Great Axe, so this is a heavy attack, let's test this one. Mm, I was too slow. Yeah, this enemy's attack, way too fast. Well, as you saw, he was able to hit me in the end. Uh, after he failed his first attack, my health did went down. And I did not get staggered because of the weapon that I have. So essentially, if I fight like this, I keep doing combos, it's harder for enemies to uh, stagger me. So what this does is that for that poise to trigger, you have to be doing something. You always have to be doing something for that poise to trigger, which fixes the backstab uh, problem that we have in Dark Souls 1. Why does it fix the backstab problem that we have in Dark Souls 1? Because you necessarily need to be performing an action, hence impeding you to get on the on the back of the enemy to be able to get a, a free backstab thanks to that backstab fishing from the builds uh, that people like to use. The problem here is that it makes a little bit less viable to have tankier builds. On Dark Souls 1 it was quite overpowered, I'm not going to lie. You could <laughs> definitely go to the Four Kings, wear a complete set of Havel's Hav armor and just tank through the boss, because the damage that they dealt to you, uh, both on the poise and the health bar, would not go f as fast as you can dish damage to them. It was fairly common to use power within and uh, just go through the, through the boss uh, fairly easily with this kind of builds. 
In Voxels 3, the difference is noticeable because you have to be rolling. You always have to be rolling. It's a, a, it's a mechanic that you definitely, necessarily have to be properly using. You always need to roll, which, was, which is something that wasn't that true on the days of the Axles. So, that is the main difference from, for Poise on those games. So, now let us discuss about Elven Ring and how this Poise on Elven Ring. As you can see in the footage right here, sadly, <laughs> I wasn't, uh, I did not get a key for, for the close network beta test. Uh, but we do have quite a lot of footage that we can uh, go through and, and, and explore, and it's still sourced in here. Uh, I'll definitely, definitely go check out the, uh, these guys' videos. They are very informative and, and quite cool, and quite cool and excellent. But as you can see, uh, he was getting passive poise, but then he takes off his armor, and you also have hyper armory, so you have the best from both worlds. So if you still have passive poise, what did they do to fight against the backstab fishing? Well, essentially, when you backstab an enemy on Elden Ring. The backstab animation takes way too long for it to trigger, so it gives the enemy the time if the enemy moves away from the backstab, the backstab gets cancelled, right? So, to be fairly honest, <laughs> I'm not sure how do I feel about that, me as a regular PvP player in all of the Souls games, because Eh, backstab is like one of the most interesting punish mechanics that you can find and you, you, uh, from software just made it uh, useless, <laughs> completely useless. Uh, for the enemy to be able to get away, uh, you, you never, never, ever, ever, when you play PvP, you never stand still. So essentially, you can no longer get backstabs on, on PvP because the enemy has the chance to move up, to move away from the backstab, but do have in mind that this mechanic is like, if they add something, they have to take away something else. Why? Simply because, when we speak, let me just, uh, I, I just got this, I do not like seeing myself naked. Alright, um, yes, the problem is that if you leave the backstab as it is on Dark Souls 3, in passive poise, <laughs> we get back to the uh, backstab fishing days of the Dark Souls 1. So essentially, it is viable in Elden Ring to use PvE tanks, but you can no longer uh, backstab fish with heavy, with ab abusing of the poise of your character in Elden Ring. The problem is that uh, backstab is also useless now, quite useless. Mm, but yeah, uh, I, I guess that's everything that you guys need to know about Poise and how this Poise. I know that I forgot to speak about Poise in Dark Souls 2, but no one really knows how Poise <laughs> works in Dark Souls 2 because Hyper Armor has something to do with it. There's also passive Poise in Dark Souls 2, adaptability has to do with Dark Souls 2, but essentially the main two terms that you need to have in mind to fully comprehend how Poise works in Elden Ring is passive Poise from Dark Souls 1 and Hyper Armor from uh, Dark Souls 3. I oh, one another thing that I forgot to mention, this is... Uh, Somewhat of a artificial poise. Some weapons, and there's a, a miracle, I believe, if my memory serves me well. I have a veal for this weapon, so essentially what this weapon is, is what it does is that it brings back a little bit of that Dark Souls 1 world to Dark Souls 3. When you're doing this, this is called Perseverance, and you have Hyper Armor, which uh, increases your, your defense, physical defense, and also prevents the enemy for, for, from staggering you because it gives you passive poise for a little brief moment. So yeah, that's quite amazing. But essentially, those are the main terms that you need to have in mind. Passive poise and Hyper Armor. Elden Ring has them both. You have passive poise on, on Elden Ring, so uh, it's also going to be interesting how is this going to be working because since uh, poise 
scales with heavy armor. If you have heavy armor, the heavier the gear that you get, the higher the points that you get. This actually adds a little, a lot more versatility to Elden Ring because now strength, uh, our boink boys <laughs> are going to to get the most out of points, whereas a dexterity character or a mage character that, I, that is not investing into strength because they do not need that strength, they need dexterity or they need intelligence or fade. And since they are not investing points into strength, that means that they have to use lighter armor. Hence, not being able to take advantage of the passive poise, which leaves them a little bit uh, in a rough spot when it comes to poise play. And but I do have to say that it that it adds a whole lot of versatility. Um, also, uh, the, the stats are just being changed quite uh, amazingly on Elden Ring. I'm going to be playing around with them quite a lot. So, uh, needless to say, Elden Ring builds are going to be amazing because there's so much versatility, so much change. But anyways. I, I have taken way too much of your time already. That being said, I'll see you guys uh, in the next one. Have a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful day. Remember that if no one stole it today, that you're a gorgeous, beautiful goddamn person. And you are indeed a gorgeous, beautiful person. Remember to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Remember to like the video because it really helps me a lot. Come on, help, uh, help a, a merry old little James. That being said, I'll see you damn gorgeous, beautiful gamers in the next one. Have a beautiful day.